In this video, we're gonna do a comparison between NPM install and NPM CI and show why you should be using NPM CI for your container image builds or your Docker image builds rather than using NPM install. Most of the time when people talk about the advantages of NPM CI, usually they say NPM CI is faster, which it is, and I'm gonna show that in a second, but that's not the real reason you should be using NPM CI for your continuous integration builds or when building your Docker image files. The major reason you should be using NPM CI is that you're gonna get a reproducible build and that's what we're gonna show you today. And, and the major reason you get that reproducible build is because NPM CI uses package lock JSON as opposed to package JSON to build your files. This video forms part of a series that we've been doing on how to build a production Node.js image. And through the series, we've been improving the images as we go along. In the last video, we showed why you should be using the node env production environment variable. And in this video, we'll, we're gonna show you why you should be using npm CI rather than npm install. So the first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna open up VS Code and we're gonna have a look at the, uh, the application that we've been building. Okay, I've opened up VS Code at the moment, and what you can see is we've got the same application that we built in the uh, the Node Env production video that we did, which is really a simple Hello World application, but we've added some a whole bunch of other junk. What I'm gonna do at the moment is just clean this uh, application up a little bit so that we can get back to having a very, very simple Hello World. So I'm just gonna remove, remove the stuff that we did with Pug. I'm gonna remove the crash report and endpoint. And what we are gonna get back to is having a very, very simple Hello World application that runs on an express server on port 3003. And then when we, we hit the, the, the main URL endpoint, it's just gonna return Hello World. So I, I've done that. And what you can kind of see there at the moment in my package JSON, I've still got a bunch of dependencies in here, such as express, moment, path, etc. So I'm, I'm gonna remove a bunch of those dependencies um, because apart from express, I, I don't really need them anymore. And and I installed Jest in that in that original one. I don't really need that anymore either. So I'm just gonna remove that as well. And I'm, and I'm doing this for, for a particular reason. So if I hit uh, save on that, so what I'm gonna do just now is, before we get started, let's just take a look at the node modules folder that we have. And you can see that from the previous version of the application, there's a whole load of node modules. There's a whole load of packages uh, that we've got pre-installed. So I'm just gonna come out of that and I'm gonna rerun npm install now that I've changed my package.json and we'll see what actually happens to our node modules folder. Okay, npm install has completed. As you can see from my screen there, it has taken around 44 seconds to perform that installation. And then if I go into the node modules folder again, what we can see there is we've got a much smaller list of packages that have been installed in the application. Now that I've built my application using npm install, what we're gonna do is, as a comparison, is we will do a build, a clean build, using npm CI. So what, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove my, my node modules uh, folder, uh, and that means we're gonna start from a very, very clean build. So if I just run npm CI. So the first thing I want you to see is there is a huge difference in speed. When I did my npm install, it took 45 seconds for that first build. NPM CI is running much faster. It, it took 2.715 seconds. So that, that speed difference is just gonna make your workflow a little bit easier. And so, and, and, and I can prove it, I can, I can do the exact same thing again. So I can just do an RM minus RF on my node modules. And then this time we can run an NPM install. This time around it took 5.6 seconds to do the NPM install compared to NPM CI, which obviously took 2.7 seconds. So NPM install on a clean installation of a node modules, uh, it, it's still double the amount of time that NPM CI. But if you remember that first build that we did, it took something like 45 seconds. And the reason it took 45 seconds is that in the very first build that we had, it was very dirty. Remember I had had on my express server, I had a whole load of things pre-installed like Jest and I had Moment and a whole other things. An NPM install had to remove all of that, clean all of that up. And again, it took a long time, 45 seconds. Whereas NPM CI, 
you know, still did it in a couple of seconds. And and that's because there's a fundamental difference in the way npm CI works and the way npm install works. And and I and I can show that by just going into the node module. So if I were to go into npm ins uh, node modules for npm install, so let's do that. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new folder and we'll call it uh, hello Chris in this sense, or hell Chris uh, typo. And then if I come back and then I run npm install again, what you're going to see is, is that the npm install is going to go through that folder. It's going to identify hell Chris folder, and then it's going to remove it. And you see that, remove one package, audited 50. So I've still got 50. And that is fundamentally how npm install works there. What it's doing is going through every single folder in your node modules, comparing that against your package.json, and then and what it's doing is adding and removing packages. It's it's not a clean install. It's it's doing adding and removes. That's that's one of the key things. Whereas if I look at npm ci, if I do the exact same thing again, this time if I go into the node modules, and we'll say uh, and we'll try and type hello Chris this time, or, <laughs> or hello cross, <laughs> but I've created that. If I then do a cd dot dot, and then this time I do an npm ci, does it in three point eight two nine seconds. So what's actually going on there? The key thing, in, and, and the clue is in the title there, how the way NPM CI works. What NPM CI does is it actually removes everything from your node uh, modules folder and then re-adds the 50 packages. So rather than sort of adding things and removing things, so you're not going to get into a sync issue, it's just going to clear it all and, 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 and then rebuild that from scratch. And I think that's probably one of the, the absolute key differences. So if I come back to my Docker file for a second, one of the techniques everybody uses in, in Docker files is, is this uh, independent installation of their dependencies. So what you would do is copy across your package JSON and your package lot JSON. Uh, there, you don't bring across your node modules, and then you do an npm install. And by doing an npm install, then it will recreate all your, your node modules, and it's doing that clean. And, and again, that is... The major reason you do this is because you want to create this really clean build in, in Docker. But actually, if you, you think about this, with the usage of npm CI, because it's completely removing your node modules folder, it in some regards, it, it doesn't matter anymore if you bring across the node modules folder or not, because we can guarantee npm CI is going to clean out that folder completely, and, and then it's going to rebuild it from scratch. So, so in, in some regards, we, 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 we don't necessarily need to do that step. The only reason we're now having to do that if we're using NPM CI is, is to not do a, a big copy and, and transfer into your Docker file that you don't need to do. Whereas before, when you were just doing an NPM install, then, then really you were protecting yourself some, from having leftover goop in your, your node modules folder. So although you could strictly argue copying your package JSON and building your dependencies independently is no longer strictly necessary, uh, I would still recommend that maintaining that practice is a good idea. Um, it, it's going to give you a, that cleaner build. You're not transferring any goop into your Docker image. Um, you're not building anything in your layers that you don't need. So maintain that practice, but but be aware that had this idea of of your node modules getting out of sync, it isn't really going to happen anymore with NPM CI. The second thing that I want to look at is just like the NPM install, it supports the minus minus production flag. And I um, so that works completely in the same way as it does with NPM install. So if you were to run NPM CI minus minus production, that is going to be the equivalent of having your node env to be in production. I'm not going to go through that in this video. So the key thing about having the minus minus production flag set is, is your application is going to perform better. And it, more importantly, it's not going to install any of your dev dependencies. I have a whole other video on that. And, and I, you know, I recommend that you go and, go and look at that. So good news is we've cleaned up our Docker file and we're in a good shape. What I want to do now is, is deep dive a little bit more into uh, what's actually going on with the build um, of, our, of our application. Let's deep dive into the npm CI command a little bit more and how it differs from the npm install. So at the beginning of the video, I said it didn't actually use your package JSON file and it used the package lock JSON file 
uh, to perform the build. And, and actually, it goes a little bit further than that. If you don't have a package lock JSON file, it's not going to work. So if we go into our VS code for a second, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my package lock JSON file that we've got here, and I'm actually just going to rename it to something else. So we'll just put a little X in front of this. Life is good. And then what I'm going to do within my terminal is I am going to do an npm CI, and we'll see what happens. So we'll just run that for a second. And as you can see there, it, it's, it's just failed, right? So you can see warning prepare, remove it, blah, 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 and then it's just failed there. So as you can see from the screen, um, you get an error message that says can only install packages with an existing package lock JSON or an npm track, rack JSON. So if you don't have a package lock JSON file, it's not going to uh, install that at all. And that is a key difference between npm install. So if I was to run npm install there, and we'll just we'll just run that, what it's going to do in this case is it's going to regenerate me a package lock JSON file. So it's going to take a little bit of time, but it will go ahead and it will regenerate that package lock JSON. And that is one of the major differences between npm CI and and an npm install is that dependency on your package lock JSON. And that's really important for reproducibility from a CI build because let's imagine that I don't have my package lock JSON file and I'm and I'm I'm running my npm install. I could be getting completely different versions uh, of my application. And whereas with the package lock JSON, I can guarantee that the exact versions of all my dependencies are going to be are going to be utilized. So by using the package lock JSON file, it really means I'm going to get this reproducible build that I want. And and that is the major difference. So so think of package lock JSON being your your key uh, yeah your key input there as opposed to your 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 package JSON. So the so the second thing that is actually going to there is 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 what if there is differences? So let's say I've got something in my package JSON file and it's different from my package lock JSON. Well, well, we can go. We can actually uh, we can actually see what happens there. So I've got an Express here. So let's change my version of Express to four seventeen zero. And if I look at my package lock JSON, what you're going to see if I look at for Express, there you go. I've got four seventeen dot one. So I'm going to save my package JSON. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an npm ci, and and again what it's going to do is is throw up an error. So one of the other major differences that npm ci does is because it's using your package lock JSON, it is going to use the exact versions that you have. And if your package JSON and your package lock JSON get out of sync, then it's not going to do the installation. So let me let me show you what I mean. So if I go to my package lock JSON, actually first of all, if you look at my package JSON, you can see it's expecting version fourteen seventeen point one. If I go into my package lock JSON, here you see that same version. If I were to switch that and change that from four uh, to 417.0, and then I was to run npm ci, you can see I get an error, and it's in, it can only install packages when your package.json and package lock JSON uh, are in sync. My package JSON and my package lock JSON are not in sync, so it's throwing uh, an error. In comparison, if I run npm install, it, it doesn't care if my package JSON and my package lock JSON are out of sync. So when I look at building my containers, not having reproducibility is probably the biggest issue. And it's an issue that a lot of people suffer from. So the developer is working on, on their application and they've got specific dependencies on their machine. You're on an NPM install, you get a completely different set of uh, uh, dependencies, uh, but different packages installed, and then you get some errors. By using NPM CI, it is going to install the exact versions that you run on your machine, and therefore you're not going to run into that trouble. And I think, and I think that for me is one of the the key reasons to to use npm ci. So to summarize, npm ci is faster than npm install. You're not going to get into any synchronization issues with your node modules folder. You're not going to get into synchronization issues between your package JSON and your package lock JSON. So you're going to get these faster, cleaner, more reproducible builds uh, than using npm install.
So when you're building Docker files uh, for production images, I would really recommend going forward uh, using the npm ci dash dash production is really the way forward. Um, and using that technique, obviously still using that technique to copy your package JSON and your package lock JSON, that's, that you still absolutely need to do that, but I would recommend using NPM, NPM CI over NPM install for building your containers. One last thing, NPM CI is great. Uh, it's fantastic for, for building your images, but obviously you can't install dependencies, so, and you can't generate package lock JSON files, so, when you as a developer are building your application, if you need to install a package, so if you're installing uh, Jest or Express or something, you still need to use npm install. Uh, you still need to uh, do your install save to your package JSON. It will generate your package lock JSON. But when you then bring that into your CI build or you're building your containers, then start using npm CI dash dash production. Anyway, I hope you got value from this. Thanks very much. Bye.